Howdy folks and welcome to this episode of Burns Misadventures. In this episode I'm going to show you a couple things that I recently learned that I thought were pretty cool. And uh, they have to do with using GIMP. Now what I wasn't aware of until very recently is that you can use GIMP to create ASCII art. Now ASCII art basically means that you're going to take a picture and you're going to render it as ASCII characters. So let's open, let's open a picture. We will open this picture here. Yeah, that's a good one. Easy. All right, cool. So if we open this picture here, and I, I just grabbed it off of a Google search, so you know that's okay. We're not going to use it for much. But anyway, what you could do is you can do file export as, and then you can just simply choose here. See where it says here, select file by type by extension. If you go up here and change that from where it says JPEG, change that to TXT. TXT. And you export it, and then it'll ask you again, you want to use it as a text file, and you export it. Alright, well that's cool enough, right? So we just minimize. Then, you can go over here to find your file. Now if you go back over here and find the file you just minimized, which we better open GIMP again. I have no idea where it exported it to. Let's see, file, export as, let's see where it put it. Okay, I put it in the downloads for some reason. That, that's okay, as long as we know where we can find it for this example. Alright, so we go to our downloads, and cowhead to dot text right here so okay that doesn't look like much does it so let's enlarge it look at here how about that so I thought it might be kind of cool to go ahead and use this as ASCII art in NeoFetch in the terminal right and the problem with that is you just don't have the resolution. You only have a very small. See, once you make this small enough to fit in NeoFetch, you won't have the resolution to be able to tell what the heck you're looking at. And when it really starts looking nice here is you go to View, and then you go to Select Font, and you get a really small font, like, say, 2, and select that. That's when it looks almost like a picture. The point of this all is so I I tried using some of these in the terminal and they really if you didn't know what they were you'd never recognize them as what they were so it occurred to me only today <laughs> that the easiest way to make a cow now that here I got X cow say says opening the terminal and then I went ahead and did the output for regular cow say so cow say and uh, if you don't know let me see it here. So cow say, let's see, control shift plus 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 plus. We'll make it big enough where we can see. If you don't have it installed and you have an Ubuntu derivative such as what this is, it's already in your repos. And all you have to do is you just do the sudo apt. You don't even need to put get. You just install and cow say. You gotta spell it right. So that's how you would install that. I'm not currently connected to the internet on this machine, so it does we won't worry about trying to install it and getting that error. But once it's installed, you simply say cow say a space quotations and then you can put anything you want it to say. Like you can say it's a beautiful Sunday. Right, and then the cow will say exactly what you said to say. So here's your cow, and he says, it says, she says, <laughs> obviously she, it's a beautiful Sunday afternoon. So what I did was I chose that as, uh, it just says Vern's Imu. So another thing you can do is pipe things through cow say. Uh, like, uh, let's say you want to do uname dash all, and then you can put a pipe which is the straight up and down line, which is shift and the button just over the enter key. 
and then uh, you could just do calce. So there's that. You can have it output. You can put anything piped through. Uh, anything that has a text output can be piped through calce. That's enough about that. So let's see. Let's have a look at the uh, cowhead text that I have here in my pictures. So we go to the pictures. Now I did some Googling and I'll, I'll put the links or I'll put the uh, references in the description. We're not going to look at the websites right now because that yeah, was just not. Okay, so here's my cowhead logo.txt right now. Now, I, in order to simplify everything, <laughs> we still have it on the on the two font, so let's just select a larger font. And we'll go back up to 12. So, yeah. So you have to put this dollar sign and then in the curly is C1. Now, you can choose other ones and it'll change the color. So you could choose different colors if you like. I think it's two, it's one through six. Two doesn't do much. Let's see what uh, three would do. And we'll just do file save. But apparently this little deal here that tells it what color to render is very important. And you'll have issues displaying it if you don't put that. So we'll go ahead and do that. Then we'll go ahead and open the terminal again. Opening terminal on Vern's iMovie. Oh yeah, so it changed color to this color, whatever this is. What is this, uh, yellow? Kind of a amber color, actually. But at any rate, so you can change your color if you wanted to on your little cow by just changing the values in that C, in the curlies, for the color value. Now here's one of the more complicated ones that I tried to use. Well, it's gone now. Yeah, here's one of the more complicated ones I tried to use at one point. But like I say, once you get it down to a size where it displays in the terminal, it's, it just doesn't look like what it started out to look like at all. And I'm like, okay, well, if I knew this was a cow, maybe it kind of looks like a cow or kind of looks like a pig. I don't, I don't know what it looks like. The point is, it's, it's not very recognizable. So when you're going to use ASCII art, especially in a 12 font, and make the picture no bigger than like a 50 pixel square, well, you got to make it simple. You can't have a whole lot of detail. I decided that the Kausei output is probably the most perfect thing you could do. It's easy to make. It's easy to change. And uh, I'll show you how I made it. And so, well, I'll just minimize. Actually, we'll open a fresh one. There, we'll open a new file. File new. Okay, so this is our, our new fresh one here in the second tab. We'll, we'll come back to this. So what you do is you go to your terminal. Right? And you can go to... Is do Kause This is an alternate output again. Okay, so there's there's all that, right? So what you want to do is you, you put your cursor here, I'm gonna bring this bigger so you we can all see. Okay, cool. So you take your uh, your your cursor here, and you put it to make sure you catch these lines here, right? So you start, you click, and then you start dragging, and you just get all of this down to this point here, and you just copy. Okay, then we can minimize. Now we go back to our text file. And you just uh, want to leave a, a line so you can drop that color specification in there. And then you just paste. So there it is. This is an alternate output. And it's as simple as that to create 
a cow themed um, cow say output. So all we'd have to do to make this a workable solution would be to copy this right here where you specify the color. So you copy that, go over here and put it over here. Dokey didn't work out quite perfectly, but I guess it's okay. I'll show you how you can make NeoFetch display it. And that's pretty simple too. I'll show you in my bash RC file. Uh, let's see. We're not gonna make any changes, so I won't even do sudo. I'll just do nano. Nano and then uh, tilde slash dot bash oops RC. Okay. Well, most of this was already here before I ever started poking around in here. So here's what I added. All right, right here is where I generated station identification with Xcalse. Now, you can install Xcalse the same way that I showed you to install just regular Calse. Now, Xcalse actually uses the X screen and creates a, a graphic instead of a text output. Whereas Calse just does a text output. So I just called xcalse and then the quotations opening terminal and burns iMove, right? So that's how that happens when you when you open the terminal. Well Ginger is determined to make noise while I'm trying to do this. So here's where we do the Neo Fetch with custom distro logo. Just do clear and and then Neo Fetch and then here's what you gotta add to Neo Fetch. Source and then point it to whatever file you want to use as your text file to create the ASCII art. So as in this case, mine was cowheadlogo.txt and I remembered that. So, you know, whenever I wanted to change it, the easiest way to do it is simply rename the existing cowheadlogo.txt to something else and then call your new file cowheadlogo.txt. That way you don't have to change any of this. Now, the last thing I did was I created an alias so that NeoFetch uses a custom distro logo whenever it's called. So, rather than it popping up with the, uh, with the Tux logo, so now anytime NeoFetch is called, it's going to go NeoFetch, source, and then it points to my cowhead logo, right? So anytime you type NeoFetch in terminal, anyway, if we were to uh, comment out that, here, we'll just go ahead and close it, and then we'll, do, we'll, we'll open it up in that manner so we can show you. Control X will close nano. So now we'll just do sudo bang bang. So sudo space and a bang bang. Now we'll repeat the previous line with sudo in front of it. And then we'll put in our password. Now we can edit. And so if we go over here Now, an alias just makes it where you can type something else and it'll run a command that it knows. And like I say, to comment it out, you just simply put a pound sign in front of whatever you've called there. So we'll just put a pound sign right there and a space just to make it look nice. Okay, and then to save that, you gotta do Control O and Enter and Control X. So, here, let's demonstrate. So we will close our terminal. Well, actually, yeah, we'll have to reload the bash RC. So we need to close the terminal and reopen it. So because in our bash RC file, we asked it to call this file to begin with, it still runs it when you open the terminal. But when you type it, they made it a little larger. When you type it, see, then you get the default output, which was the Tux logo for this distro. Now, if this was Ubuntu, you'd get the Ubuntu logo, or Arch, you'd get the Arch logo. But I think it didn't recognize Perl for what it was, which is actually an Ubuntu derivative. A lot of times you'll get the Ubuntu when you see this, but. Uh, I guess it didn't recognize it for what it was. 
And so it just gave you the, uh, the tux output there, which was kind of neat too. I like it and everything. It just, I want to do something custom. So as you can see, the way they did tux logo here, I mean, it's very few characters. You're just talking about hash signs and basically change some colors on a couple zeros for eyes by the looks of it. Very cool the way they did that. I've been trying for some time to try to come up with a, a cool logo and no matter what I seem to make, it just doesn't look like a cow when I'm done. <laughs> so I'm just gonna punt it and we're just gonna use cow save. So before we close out this video, I'll show you one more little shortcut you can do here. Yeah, we'll just get a fresh fit. We'll get a fresh one. Alright. So now that when you type NeoFetch, you can use any text file as your output. Right? So, if we were to type NeoFetch, and then just do dash dash source, and then a space, all we got to do now is we can open up our file manager and find our text, our text files here. Like, let's see here. Here's our cowhead. Oh, here's cowheadlogo.old. So if we just take it and drop it over there, drag and drop. Come on now. Don't make a fool of me. Well, in most, in most of them, you can. Apparently, you can't with the XFCE, which I believe this is XFCE terminal. There. No, it's LX terminal. Excuse me, LX terminal. I think we could do it with the GNOME terminal, but apparently, yeah, it doesn't matter. So, yeah, we'd have to do the whole path, and the path's right here. You could copy and paste that. So I'll just do that. So either way, it was still helpful. Paste. And then simply cowhead logo old text. So I'll just do cowhead. Oh, no. OLD dot text. All right. Then let's see what it, what it comes up with when we do this. So there's one of the cow heads I tried to do. It's a great example. And if you know it's supposed to be a cow head, then it kind of looks like a cow's head. But if you don't know, it doesn't look like anything except a mess. <laughs> so I, I, I just, whatever. You know, that was something that I resized, a picture that I took and I rendered it with GIMP and I resized it and I tried to use that. So now that you have been shown the way, hmm, be interested to see what other people could come up with. But at any rate, that is that. So with that, I want to thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed already, I'd like to invite you to do so. And if you are a subscriber, I'd like to thank you for hanging around. So this brings to a close another Vern's Misadventures. Y'all take care.